Should the Leafs limit Matthews down the stretch or let him try to make history? We debate that and more on today's edition of the Locked On Leafs podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome into the Locked On Leafs podcast, the daily Maple Leafs Center podcast hosted by myself, Mike DiStefano, and my co-host, Dave Morissuti. Big weekend for our friend Dave. Would you like to share with the class what you're going to be up to this weekend? I am going to be heading to the city of brotherly love for a little Russell mania. You got to say it like Vince McMahon. Russell mania. Oh my God. God, that Dave, uh, Dave, WrestleMania. Is that what he says? Uh, Welcome to WrestleMania. If I do bow. that, my, my, no, uh, I mean, I haven't really heard Mix Man really do WrestleMania. Often. Ah, back in the day, back in the day. Welcome. Hey, I guess he did it for like Monday Night Raw or like WrestleMania. Yeah, but I don't, my, my voice will be destroyed for the rest of the podcast if I do that. I don't do a good big McMahon. <laughs> Good point. Good point. Plus, you got to save up, uh, save up for the chanting all weekend long. Uh, you doing both nights, Saturday and Sunday? Both nights. Oh, buds, you are going to be in heaven, uh, in absolute heaven. Should be a fun one. A little bit later in the show, we're going to be doing our WrestleMania Leafs card. We do this every year. It is one of my favorite episodes and segments we do on the podcast. We have compiled what we believe to be uh, the best WrestleMania card using Maple Leafs players. So that is uh, what we got on uh, the lineup for us later on. Also going to tee up uh, tomorrow night's game between the Leafs and Les Abidants at the Bell Center. So we'll preview that game. But I want to get into a conversation that uh, I was having today, or that I overheard today, rather, on uh, on Overdrive. And I want to get your thoughts on it. You know, there, there's the conversation's been out there of whether or not, you know, do the Maple Leafs let uh, Austin Matthews try and, and make history? Do they let him try and get to 70 goals, or should they rest him down the stretch? Uh, I want to hear your thoughts uh, initially on where you sit on this debate and where you sit on this conversation, and then I'll kind of give my thoughts on it afterwards. So, you know, where do you sit? Do, do you think that the Leafs should let Austin Matthews play out the rest of the games and get as close to 70 or even maybe hit that number? Um, or do you think that the Leafs should, you know, kind of limit his minutes and make sure that the real goal is what happens over the next two months, not over the next two weeks? The thing is, they've done this before where they give the guys rest. I, I did not get a chance to see Austin Matthews play in the game because the Leafs gave him and Mitch Marner the night off on the second half of a back-to-back. I get it. You don't need the guys playing both both nights, right? Especially near the end of the season. At the same time, I also don't think that you need to go too tough into the resting and then they may not even be ready for the playoffs either, right? Like They should be ready to play. If he's close... I think he still will want to do it. I understand that Sheldon Keefe made a point and said, look, I know that he wants to do this, but we're trying to think of the team. I got no problem with that. But if he's close, like Martin missed out on 100 because they gave him the rest. Like those are career mile- milestones, and you just, I don't know how many times they're going to be able to do it, right? Maybe Matthews right. does get another chance. I say let him play the next few games, see how it goes, and if he's close, let him. If he wants to play, you let him play. I understand you got to be conservative, but at the same time, it's not always foolproof. Like other teams don't necessarily always rest their guys as much as they do down the stretch. What's the final day of the Leafs schedule? I think it's the seventeenth. The Leafs have the game against the uh the Tampa Bay Lightning to close things out. Um I, don't I believe it's the 17th. I'm just double checking right now. Yeah, it is. So yeah. it's April 17th. 
So the Saturday is when things kick off on April 20th. That's when the Stanley Cup playoffs start, which was moved up a couple of days. I don't know if that really caught uh, your radar or I don't, I think I was on vacation when that got announced. So I don't know if you talked about it on the podcast, but it got moved up a couple of days, the start of the playoffs, the start date. And I wonder if that'll factor in at all. Like originally, if it was to start on the Monday, let's say that would have been a couple extra days. That would have gave them five days off before the game where it's like, okay, there's your time to get, you know, rested up, recovered and get ready to go for game one. I wonder how much that will change, you know, the process or the thought process of the Leafs when it comes to uh, whether or not they play Austin Matthews in those, that final back to back. Cause they end the game or they end the season on a back to back in Florida and then in Tampa. And then three nights later, you start game one of the playoffs. So um, it is going to be an interesting situation if you get there and Austin sitting on like 68 or 69 goals. Like I, I think you let him play. Like I I'm, I'm of the belief of that. And not only just for the sheer fact that you want to try and get to 70, but you know, a, a thing that I never actually thought about that Frank Corrado discussed today on overdrive was um, he's also like running hot right now. Like he's, he's in a groove and there's no reason to park him if he's not banged up, if he feels like he's good to go and he's out here playing this red hot, like keep the engine running, you know, don't cool him off if he doesn't need to be cooled off. Uh, that was a, a kind of an interesting angle uh, that, that, you know, I, I thought Frankie brought up on overdrive today that I hadn't really considered either. Um, if he's not injured, like, let him play, you know, like that's kind of always been the case where most players back in the day played a full 82. And it's only because of sports science recently that it's become uh, more acceptable, I guess, for players to sit. But, you know, back in the day, Sackett, Geiserman, Lemie, like all those guys, if they were healthy, they played all 82 games, you get paid to play all 82 games. So I'm almost at the point where it's like, even if he's not close, even if he's sitting on like, I don't know, 65, 66, like, just for the sake of keeping him playing at an elite level, keeping that engine running hot uh, per se, I-, I think they should just play him out the rest of the way. And I think a way that you could also get it done and maybe ha- you know kill two birds with one stone or have your cake needed too, whichever one you want to choose in terms of a phrase, I-, I think there's a way to limit ice time in-game. And I think that Keith mm-hmm. is actually already starting to do that. Like I was taking a look at... Austin Matthews time on ice over the course of the last few games here. Um, last night against Tampa, he played a little bit more because, you know, they were losing. So he ends up playing 21 minutes, 41 seconds. But the three games prior to that, where the team had established a lead, they had won uh, some games there. He only played 18 minutes against Florida, 16 minutes against Buffalo, and then 18 minutes again against Washington. You know, I think there's a way where Austin can get into these games but not be overworked, still remain in the, you know, in uh, a good rhythm, put up some goals while he's out there, maybe get to 80 or 70 goals, maybe 80 at the way that this guy's scoring. Uh, and, and everyone could be happy and he gets a, a little bit of in game rest, but then also has the opportunity to reach these milestones. I think there's a way you could do both. There is. Like, t- you don't necessarily need to give the guys full days off. Look, I think the Leafs have a back-to-back coming up. If you feel like, you know what, the second half of that back-to-back, you want to give him a night off. If he's not feeling great, sure. But if no, he's not... play him. Well, play well him. if he's dealing with an injury, I'm saying. Like, oh, okay. obviously. Yeah. I'm not talking like if... Guys need to play. Like, I, I, I subscribe to... You don't want to take a guy off his rhythm. If he's mm-hmm. feeling good, Matthews is scoring... I think it also says something that it gives him something to chase for, something to push him for the rest of the season, right? They've also canceled practice. They've also not done practices to keep guys fresh. That's yeah. how you do it, too. Right. Right? These guys don't really need as much practice. Austin Matthews doesn't really need practice. He needs just the game action, really, to get himself practice. going here. Talk about Practice. Practice. We talking about practice, not the games, but practice. You should bring that up when you're in Philly <laughs> this weekend. 
<laughs> I, I want to come back in one piece, Mike. Uh, good point. Good point. Uh, they love Iverson over there, don't they? I mean, he was a stud for uh, for Philly back in back in the day. Um, yeah, so I thought that was just interesting. So we'll see what happens. I mean, he needs seven goals in seven games. He's, so he's got to average a goal a game here on out to, to reach 70. And I think in order to get there, he'll probably have to play the final seven games, each of the final seven games. Um, I mean, it'd be great if he can get to 70, you know, by, I guess, Florida. And then in that second game of the back-to-back against Tampa, okay, maybe you can make that decision. If he reaches 70, mm-hmm. uh, potentially you could, you could do that. But I don't know. I, I, I think that uh, keep him in rhythm, give him something to strive for give the team something to strive for something to play for, I think uh, is, is definitely a good thing as well. And there's a way to limit his minutes and, and get him off his feet, uh, whether it's limiting his minutes in game or like you said, uh, practice uh, on the other side. Uh, we'll tee up tonight's game or tomorrow night's game between the Leafs and Les Abidants. And then a little bit later, got to unveil our WrestleMania Maple Leafs wrestling card so we'll do that also in a little bit i'm mike DeStefano with dave morris studio you're listening to the locked on lease podcast part of the locked on podcast network it's your team every day today's episode is brought to you by robin hood did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement you can still have an ira robin hood has the only ira that gives you a three percent boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to robin hood gold but get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on that 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of Q1 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. Uh, investing involves risk including loss limitations apply to iras and 401ks three percent match requires robin hood gold for one year from the date of the first three percent match must keep robin hood ira for five years the three percent matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions robin hood ira available to u.s customers in good standing robin hood financial llc member of sipc is a registered broker dealer Welcome back into the Locked On Lease Podcast. It's Mike DiStefano and Dave Morissuti. We are a daily Maple Leaf centric podcast here at Locked On Leafs. You can find uh, our podcast wherever, uh, whichever platform you use to either listen or stream your podcast. You can also find us uh, video format up on YouTube. Just search up Locked On Leafs. And we are still on our road to 5K subscribers. We got like like a hundred, 105, like we're, we're so close. We are, we are really getting really down to the nitty gritty. Uh, so share the podcast, let your friends and family know that, uh, if you want a chance to win yourself a Leafs Jersey ahead of the playoffs, subscribe to the locked on Leafs podcast, uh, on YouTube and, uh, you know, enter and, and, you know, hopefully you can be one of the lucky, uh, one of 5,000 subscribers to, to do it. So, but we need to get to 5k to get that done. So we're hoping to do it as soon as possible. Uh, Leafs and Habs this weekend. Dave, the pesky, pesky Les Habitants. Um, I believe they got dummied by the Tampa Bay Lightning uh, last night. Uh, But they did beat the Florida Panthers the night before. So they helped out Toronto a couple of nights ago, but then you know, allowed Tampa to inch just a wee bit closer to Toronto in the standings. Two points back. Two points, just two points when we wake up uh, Wake up this morning. So it's it's a little worrisome, um, I, I will say, kind of. Nah, not really, actually. I, I take that back. But anyways, it, they're not solidified in that three hole, let's just say. Uh, but a win against the Habs would definitely uh, be much better than a loss, I think we could say. Uh, what are you expecting out of the buds in this one? Well, I think details, right? Be be more stingy on your defensive zone coverage. That was a big problem against uh, Tampa. And, you know, for, for the Leafs, it's almost like they've tried a lot of mixing and matching and doing, trying experimentations. 
just go out and play your game. Let's not experiment. Like the time for experimenting should have been done earlier in the season. I understand there's changes now to the lineup and things like that, but let's focus about winning and getting good habits rather than experimenting and failing in those experiments. Huh. Yeah, yeah. A la the Braden Point goal from the other night. Um, I mean, I don't have an issue if they want to, you know, build a lead early and then experiment when you have the game and the two points in the bag. Okay, sure. Although the Habs, you're not going to really get a glean a lot from the matchup against the Habs like you would against Tampa yeah. and Florida anyway. So just, you know, win the game, just, just play and win the game. Uh, what is going to be interesting is, is the possibility of the return of one Mitch Marner. Uh, you know, we, we haven't heard, we'll hear later today, I'm sure from Sheldon Keefe on whether or not Mitch Marner will uh, for sure get the game, but I know that this was the target return for him. Um, but the real question is like, what, what do they do with Mitch Marner when he returns? Does he just go right up back onto the top line and get reunited with, uh, with, with Austin Matthews there or, you know, have you liked what you've seen out of this Matthews Domi Bertuzzi trio? And maybe you put Mitch Marner elsewhere to, to start things off here when he returns. I just think when you look at how the Leafs have played throughout the years, it they've tried Marner Matthews. How many times? Like, it's not like we're going to, ex- I'm not expecting anything different than what I'm seeing, but we know that they can play together if you need to. But you throw a different look out there in the playoffs with Matthews playing with a, a Domi and a Bertuzzi. Then you got Mitch in a different position. Now teams are going to have to think about it a little bit more. Like, I know that Tampa puts Kudrov and Point together. They don't put Stamkos on that line. They don't load up their top line with all of their top players. They spread things out a little bit. I think that's what Sheldon Keefe should do. He should split them up just because I think they play. They will play better if they have a little more depth and the teams aren't going to go after Matthews and Marner. Marner has proven that he can play with other players. He doesn't necessarily need a... Sure, maybe they're comfortable playing with each other, like playing with each other, but you got to start thinking about what's going to give this team the best route to winning, and I think splitting them up gives them that best chance. So what does it look like for you then? Like if, it, you know, Coach Morissuti uh, has the lineup card, Mitch Marner's returning tomorrow night. What do your four lines look like? Oh, okay. Um, I, I think you keep that top line of Matthews, Bertuzzi, and Domi. Mm-hmm. I think you slot Mitch Marner on that second line with Tavares. Probably put Willie on the left side. And you okay. got Marner on the right side. And then I think you go with like a Holmberg, uh, Holmberg, Nyes, and McMahon. You go with a trio okay. like that. And then on the this is where it gets tough because it's, it's the fourth line here. Um, I think this is where Nick Robertson comes out, and you keep that you. fourth line together. I'm with you. I'm with you. I I, I think uh, I would probably I'd have a hard time not having it that way the only other thing that i might see happen is if you want to have mitch marner there potentially you could try like a domi matthews marner and then you kick bertuzzi down to the second line like we've seen bertuzzi Tavares, and nylander work right you know that works uh we haven't really seen domi matthews and marner though so we've seen domi and marner but we haven't seen all three at the same time right so uh, that would be the only other option that i think uh you know shell and keith might flirt with but uh i I think i'm with you for the first game or two maybe see all right if we spread out the scoring what 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 does it look like you know what what is it what because ultimately we talk about i know you said oh enough with the experimenting but like ultimately you still do want to want to get a look at some things so that if playoff come around and whatever that top line isn't working if Matthews and Marner aren't working like we've seen happen numerous times in the playoffs um you know you, you know that there is another lineup out there 
uh, options for your your top two lines that you've played before that have seen success that maybe can build some chemistry. So maybe getting another look that way uh, ma- makes a lot of sense. But it is interesting. I think uh, the the real debate in the bottom six is pretty much Ryan Reeves or, or Nick Robertson. You know who who's the guy who stays in the lineup, and it's interesting because I mean three months ago, four months ago, t- Ryan Reeves was not the answer. That would have came out of your mouth. That's for damn sure. But the turnaround that he's had really speaks volumes. Um, when now you're looking at it and you're like, hey, Ryan Reeves, he, he beats out Nick Robertson uh, on on this fourth line. And I think it speaks to, you know, how uh, like the fourth line seems to be getting a bit of an identity. You know, like they have an identity, which I think is is key for them. And there's a little bit of trust with that fourth line. And they've played well. You know, they've they've been hard on the four check. And yeah, obviously that game against Tampa Bay, they got caught um looking and and they got caught with not covering Braden Point. Uh if you ask Sheldon Keefe, that was that was David Camp vacating the front of the net, leaving him open. Um, but ultimately I think they've they've played far better hockey than worse hockey together uh, over the course of the last couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. So I think they should stick with that fourth line and see, you know, if they can continue to play, uh, you know, some solid hockey for this group. Cause I think going forward in the playoffs, it's a look you like, especially if you're going to end up playing the Florida Panthers. Um, th- that's a look you like in the fourth line. Um, who goes in net? I guess you go back to Samsonov. Does Samsonov I, get, get started? I think so. I mean, you got a back to back coming up next week. So yeah. <laughs> you get with Samson off Saturday night and then you go with him against Pittsburgh and then Wall gets the second half of the back to back. Yeah, I guess that would make make the most sense. Probably, I would think. Um, so we'll see what Sheldon Keys end up doing. But uh, an important game like we're, we're getting to the point where uh, the, the Leafs and Tampa now so close that it's like, uh these wins now are going to be meaningful. Like they're, they're playing meaningful. And, and I mean, is it the worst thing in the world to, to drop into the wild card spot? I mean, I think that Boston, Florida, New York, Carolina, they're all very similar in terms of, uh, you know, how good they are. I think that there's like a coin flip for any of those teams as to who you'd rather play in round one. So falling out, into the wild card, I don't think is the worst thing in the world. Uh, but you still like home ice is still very much in play as well with the yeah. Panthers. Like there, there's just a, a, a four point buffer between uh, between those two teams. So there is an opportunity for the Leafs if they can win a bunch of games or win most of their games down the stretch. And if the Panthers continue to falter, uh, you know, they can maybe even clinch some home ice uh, at some point. But to do that, you got to win some games. You got to get some points. So hopefully Toronto can do that uh, in Le Bell Center against Les Habitants. All right. On the other side, Dave, it's time. It is time, my friend. We're going to unveil our WrestleMania Maple Leaf matchup cards. And it is my favorite segment that we do each and every year. That's coming up next on the Lockdown Leafs podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need, the price you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit, only available to U.S. customers. Welcome back into the Locked On Lease podcast. I was going to do like a Bruce Buffer thing, and then I realized that's ah, not the UFC or boxing. So that doesn't make sense. But it is WrestleMania weekend, and we're doing a bit of a WrestleMania Maple Leafs crossover segment. Uh, and it's it's one of them. It's probably the, the segment I, I look forward to doing the most each and every year. It's so silly. It's so stupid. 
but for a couple of marks like us, it's it's fun to blend a couple of our passions together when it comes to wrestling and uh, the Maple Leaf. So the way that it works uh, is we've come up with, I guess, technically four matches. There's there's three key matches that we have both put together and then uh, a, a battle royal match with all the leftover uh, mm-hmm. Toronto Maple Leafs roster players that we did not use for the other three matches. So we'll we'll unveil the winner um, of, of that one at the end. So you want to start with the ladder match. You want to start there because okay. I think that's the one that's kind of, for me at least, it was the, I don't want to say it was the most difficult one to come up with, but it's like the ladder match, tag team match. Like my favorite match of all time is like TLC2. I don't know about you, mm-hmm. but WrestleMania it was 17 or 18 in Houston. TLC2, yeah, with 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 the Dudleys, Edge and Christian, the Hardy Boys, that is the greatest match in history for me. My favorite match. Uh, and I always wish that there was more TLC tag team matches uh, at WrestleMania. They do have the money in the bank now, which is at least a ladder match, but it just doesn't have the same weight as the old TLC <laughs> matches do. Uh, there's just something about the tag team ladder matches that just mwah, chef's kiss. Uh, when when the WWE does those, so we're bringing that back, uh, or at least I am. I, I can't remember if you mm-hmm. decided to to make your ladder match a tag team titles match, but I, I did. did. So what uh, what is your tag team uh, duos? I suppose, and how is the match going to play out? Yeah, so I got three teams. I'm going to go with the the Russian brethren of Ilya Lubushkin and Ilya Samsonov. Ooh, I like it. I'm going to go with two of my favorite younger players on the team and Bobby McMahon and Matthew Nyes. Okay, I like it. I like it. And then if we're talking about duos, we got to go with Max Domi and Tyler Bertuzzi. Mm, why'd you go Domi and Bertuzzi? Oh, you got, you got Domi and Bert. It's just, <laughs> they, they would be, it just seems like they would perfectly fit a ladder match. Quirky, willing to kind of be a little pests out there. I feel like that was, what, and that's who I have winning the match, by the way. <laughs> so great minds think alike, because I also have Domi and Bert as a duo for this tag team championship of mine. Uh, and I also have Simon Benoit and Jake McCabe as a duo, right? Like this has become the Leafs shut down pair. And I think that they've been a pretty formidable pair so far. They won at like 55% of their minutes, 55 expected goals when those two are out on the ice together. So I've got them teaming up uh, in this TLC ladder match. And then I've got the goaltending tandem of Joseph wall and Ilya Samsonov as my third group out there together. You know, Mm. I think that they are, they are a group. They are a tandem. So why not? pair them together and throw them out there in uh in a in a tlc match against domi and burnt benoit mccabe i think it'd be an entertaining match and just like you i also have domi and burnt winning the tag team titles there that's it it just seems like they're perfect for that they were made for that yeah and i mean like they're the dudes who are brought in by by tree living they're like tree living guys they both have snot and you know they they play with a little piss and vinegar they're agitative you know, they play a similar style. So uh, I think it makes sense to kind of pair those two together. And right now they're they're, they're paired together along with Austin Matthews. So it makes sense. Put them uh, together for the championship there. Uh, all right. The next match that we have here is so they're doing a, a, a Philly street fight at WrestleMania this year. Is is that correct? Yeah, it's a Philly street fight. It's a it's a triple threat tag team match. They got three on one side, three on the other side. So who's that with at Mania? You got the Street Profits and Bobby Lashley. Then you got Killian Cross. um, And I think it's AOP is the. Okay. Is the, is, is who the well final Testament is what they're called. Okay. So so, So that's the matches there. Three V three. Yeah. Uh, street fight. Okay. So, um, did you do three V three for the street fight? I just did a one-on-one. 
I I didn't do a one on one. I kind of did. Uh, I I didn't really like go with like a number. I just went through guys and they're gonna go street fight style. Yeah, that's street fight. Yeah. Street fight. There's no structure. You just that's right. Throw, throw a bunch of weapons out there, bunch of dudes, and have at it. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, hockey sticks, You've got hockey sticks. You can throw. I don't know what else would. You'd be able to throw at somebody, I don't know, some like shin pads. I bet you if you hit someone oh, with yeah. a shin pad, that wouldn't feel very good. Nope. What else could you do? Chuck a chuck a net at them, perhaps. <laughs> do you imagine chucking a net at somebody and then they gotta try and get out of it? <laughs> or throw a guy into a net? Yeah, it, like I, I think those would be uh those would be you know quite hilarious items to use in a in a street fight. Obviously, we're gonna call this the Toronto street fight instead of the Philly street fight. So for me, I've decided to do this. It's for like the Intercontinental Championship, which is basically like the second tier title. But for me, instead of it being like the Intercontinental Championship, it's the winner of this match, you know, gets to sit shotgun to Austin Matthews over the next five years as like the the next guy, right? Like Austin Matthews is, is Batman. This is Matthews Robin. And it's a match between William Nylander and Mitch Marner. Those two duke it out in a Toronto street fight. Winner gets to be Matthews's right hand man for the next five years. Okay. Okay. What do you think? I don't hate that. I don't hate that. I was trying to figure out a way to get Marner and Nylander. It would have been interesting if their c- contracts were coming up at the same time. Could have been like, who's the guy that next to Matthews that gets paid? But Nylander kind of. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. So that that kind of made that null and void, but I don't mind that one. I don't mind loser that one gets all. traded. Oh yeah, and who and who did you have winning that? It's or it's a loser it? gets traded match. Actually, <laughs> that's what we're turning it into. A oh. loser gets traded so instead of an I quit match. Gets to you know be shotgun to Matthews because the other guy's uh, not there oh. anymore. So we're switching the rules on the fly. Um, Nylander. I have Nylander winning the match. I do have Nylander winning this match. And look, it's not because I, I want the least to move on from, from Marner. I just, I don't know, Marner, he's going to ask for a ridiculous number. Like, I already know it. He's going mm-hmm. to ask for a redonkulous number. And uh, I just, <laughs> after paying Nylander, the bump and increase that he received. I, I don't know how this team's going to possibly open up the checkbook for Marner. They're talking and, 12 plus for Mitch. Dude, I, I, yeah. I, and like, I mean, it's not that much more than what he's making now. And in terms of like cap percentage, maybe it'll even turn out to be actually less than what he was making. But uh, I don't know if, if you can have three guys making that much money, man. I, it's just, it's, it's wild. It's wild to me. Um, they've gone down that road before and, and it hasn't worked, you know, maybe putting some money towards the back end, uh, might be the, the ultimately what tree living decides to do at some point, but I don't know, but, uh, it was just an interesting conversation mm-hmm. obviously, but yeah, I have Neil Ander winning that match. What's your match? Mine is the Canadian street fight. Oh, features all the guys are Canadian. I think that kind of like for itself. billion guys. Yeah, no, no, no. We're just gonna go with four. Got Ryan Reeves. Okay. You're, if you're having a street fight, Ryan Reeves is gonna be involved. I you- I originally had Revo in this fight, but it was like I was trying to find someone else who was like an enforcer, yeah. and I'd already used McCabe in the ladder match, so I I found a different way to get Reeves in WrestleMania card. But anyways, mine is so mine's Ryan Reeves, Joel Edmondson, yeah, Simon Benoit. The fourth one I had a hard time really figuring out, but I went Jake McCabe. I went with four guys who like to play tough and hard. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes total so that, sense. That was my four. Yeah, I think that makes total sense. I mean, assume we get Revo winning that one. I actually had Edmondson. Oh, really? He's gonna do dirty. He's he's willing to go dirty. Bump right? foot and all. He's gonna get some guys from behind. They're not gonna see him coming. A little cross check to the head, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> or to the back. He he loves his cross checks. He's, to not, the back. he's not he's not shy. He is not he's not Austin. playing by prison, prison rules. I like it. All right. Um 
Next up, Hell in a Cell. Hell in a Cell match is the main event for the World Championship, which in this case, for me, is the captaincy. A triple threat Hell in a Cell match for the captaincy. The honor to wear the C on the Maple Leafs uniform. You got Matthews. You got Tavares. You got Morgan Riley. Mono, Imano, Imano with Austin Matthews coming out on top, becoming the next captain of your Toronto Maple Leafs. Oh, that's what they should do. Put those three in a cell together. Winner comes out with the C. And I think it'd be AM34, pal. You're going to hate me. You get the same thing, don't you? I had the same thing, but I had Morgan Riley winning it. Yeah, like for a while I was on the Morgan Riley captain train. I think Matthews signing a five-year extension and the year that he's having right now. True. I think that swayed me to toward Matthews over Riley. Like if 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 Tavares leaves the team in a couple of years when his contract's up after next season, I think it's gonna be between Austin and, and Mar- Morgan. For me, I think the the five year commitment and just the unbelievable like he's he's arguably the best Leaf to ever play. Um yeah. I think I think I'm leaning Matthews now. I just want what I just know that Morgan Riley push comes to shove. You know where he stands. He's the guy that doesn't give the cliche stupid answers. Sometimes you hear after games. No offense to Tavares. I'd rather watch paint dry sometimes and listen to him talk. Oh yeah. Looking if you does it bother you as much as it bothers me that like Matthews is not a cemented, like doesn't have an A on his chest in 82 games. Like him and Marner oh, alternate yep. home and away assistant captaincies. Like when I see Matthew skate onto the ice and he doesn't have a letter on his jersey, it, it's just it's so infuriating to me. It's like that that's their best player. He's a leader out there. He should have a, a, yep. a letter. Full time. I I think it should be Tavares, Riley, and Matthews have letters. Yeah. Personally, yeah. Sorry, Mitch, but I agree. Like, like Mitch to me has not proven to me that he's able to handle that leadership role. Look at the way he talked. They ask him a simple question if he had an ankle injury, and instead of saying, "You know what? I'd rather not talk about it," he gives a condescending answer. Like, dude, seriously, are we really yeah. going like that? Like, come on. Classic Mitch. Uh, classic. A little more mature. A little more yeah. mature, man. Well, you know, Mitch going to be Mitch. Mitch going to be Mitch. Uh, the final match that we have here um, is, well, in every WrestleMania, they do an Andre the Giant Battle Royal, which is essentially just like the matchup so that everyone could say that they fought at WrestleMania. It may even be a dark match now. Um, I don't even know if it's like on the pay-per-view anymore, but uh, it's, it's just a battle Royal basically with like everyone else. They get like 20, 30 guys in a ring. It's essentially like a Royal rumble, but everyone starts out in the ring at the same time. Uh, I did not use Ryan Reeves so far in my wrestling card. So I have Ryan Reeves winning the battle Royal. Cause who the hell is going to throw that guy over, uh, over the top rope before he gets you. I don't think anyone. So for me, Revo would win a, a battle royale between the rest of the guys I have available. Mine, uh, I almost used him for the street fight. I didn't. He's my favorite combatant when it comes to throwing down and going into the scraps, and it's Mark Giordano. Ooh, yep. That's a good, good pick. Yeah, it's the OG, oh man. He's, uh, he's got that old man strength. He does. Got old man, and he's he's proven that he can throw a spear or two. Remember that spear he threw on was it Konechny Konechny. last year? Yeah. Oh yeah. Favorite Giordano moment. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah, I uh, I could see that one coming uh, coming to fruition uh, as well. So there you have it. There's the WrestleMania Maple Leafs crossover wrestling card lineup, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's a it's a silly little thing that we do, but. Makes us both happy. So 
hopefully you guys enjoyed that uh that segment uh enjoy wrestlemania though man it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a grand old time you gotta give tell me where you end up going for a steak sandwich though like you're going to philly you, you're getting a steak sub right more than one yeah philly cheese philly cheese all the way absolutely gotta do it uh any final comments you want to make today oh no it's, uh i'm excited uh, it hasn't fully hit me yet it won't until i get there like it's so your first that, mania that first one I've, I've never been to wwe events before this it's been a while since i've been to a pay-per-view so it's gonna be different it, i'll f- definitely feel it more when i get there oh yeah yeah i'm sure you will should be a good time, man. I'm uh, I'm a little jealous. Not going to lie. A little bit jealous. But that'll do it for us here today on the podcast. I'd like to thank you all for listening and supporting the show. You can subscribe to the Locked On Leafs podcast on all platforms and receive daily Leafs content. Follow myself on X at Mickey underscore Canuck. Follow Dave at D underscore Morissuti and follow the show as well at Locked On Leafs. We'll be back with another episode for you guys on Monday. Enjoy the game against Montreal tomorrow. Go Leafs. Go. Until then, keep it locked right here on Locked On Leafs.